when we speak about impact assessments that are required to be done or when we speak about privacy by design or any of these other uh, topics that have come up in this conversation we are looking at how the private sector can participate uh, in like you know in the regulatory framework whichever like however that may look so to that extent uh, shrinidhi i think uh, uh, would you like to uh, share your views on how the private sector uh and special specifically india startup ecosystem which is well, like which is being encouraged very much by tech and they 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 are the ones who constantly keep voicing their concerns regarding um uh, compliance burdens of uh, data protection uh, regulation so how could how could the private sector fit in uh, uh like in terms of a uh, realistic data protection regulation without them having them suffering onerous compliance burdens um sure um uh, yeah um uh, i think one is just being in, involved in in some of these like policy conversations and and debates that's just a like a just a um, starting point i mean just just in in terms of what what might be the um requirements that either affect them disproportionately or or just if there is like lack lack of clarity in, in a proposal or a, or a law um i think often uh, what what we've seen with several of uh, say your ai or ml um, solutions providers is if especially those that that market to uh, customers in europe and the and the us um often a lot of the requirements also trickle down and and more than i, I think the law it's also this this idea of uh, building trust in the product itself um especially in contexts like health or or even the financial sector uh, we we see some of these uh, choices being made somewhat voluntarily uh, on 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 how do you um just just keeping in mind like like user privacy or or user uh, interest um to be able to sell that product like which is which 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 requires a trust uh, in 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 some sense um in in i'd say you know when there is a regulation or a or a regulator set up even and even in the run up to the law uh, just uh, like the data protection law also suggests this idea of codes of practice and that you know industry could come up come together and and have a code of practice uh, 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 which is then approved by the regulator and that becomes the norm for that sector um so if there is a way to explore how these codes could could develop with a lot of uh, sort of you know mingling or or rather uh, dissemination of ideas and and, and i guess uh, making the working with regulators to also understand how the tech works like what are the different uh, environments in which they operate and 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 just what are the different choices that they are often encountering um whether they i mean also i guess the idea of uh, how how a checkbox or just adding i mean i know I, i know consent might not be the be all end all but but just in terms of uh, if you add a checkbox these are the massive implications on a business when leading to consumer drop offs while also not meeting privacy goals so i guess some sort of evidence based some study something that that could be a little more bottom up um, and we've seen examples of different regulators around the world working closely with the industry in developing some of these uh, standards be it for anonymization or for uh, just just how the law interacts with them um, in in the iot context it could also be just uh, working with the regulator in helping them understand what the system looks like uh, in a lot of sort of iot context it's not very clear who the data controller might be as well there are multiple nodes multiple points with connected uh, devices uh, so so just i mean i guess also important to uh, um, have these conversations on how a proposed law might also interact with them and and yeah i think bottom up sort of uh, codes of practice um or or standards yeah uh, i think i think it would be like a, a good point that i see a few countries do uh, is when they proactively help the private sector figure out um what exactly is the compliance going to involve all right because do you think that there is a situation right now where the private sector isn't exactly sure how much or like what is the compliance they're looking at they there are a lot of concepts being thrown at them a lot of like i rights of users like data portability like erasure correction etc and they may no have no mechanisms or 
like frameworks are uh, like which they which they would implement for these when these rights again all of a sudden so how do you think we should approach that mismatch between concepts that the law is bringing in and how ready private sector needs to be for that sure no so just last week we done a discussion with uh, startups and it did speak a lot to just lack of clarity uh, on on what a lot of the law uh, actually requires them to do um i would say even something as uh, as simple sounding as consent i mean it's not simple actually consent versus explicit consent uh, what does that really mean on a user interface uh, does it mean that you have either you have the same standard across the board for all types of uh, any just a checkbox or or with explicit cons- consent does it mean you need to display some more information uh, i don't believe that the law can granularly set this out uh because it won't be able to account for all the different products apps everything but but i, I think just uh, helping a lot of businesses understand that the expectation is is so and so eventual goal is this that user privacy you account for user interest at each stage and you are able to sort of demonstrate that um i think the law also gives a lot of occasion for like you know there could be several technical violations of the uh, law but that might not be the intent of the law um something for example uh, on children's data on use of children's data there is a bar on profiling um uh, tracking behavioral advertising and any other activity that causes significant harm so a lot of uh, startups and 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 sort of edtech platforms have this question around if we're designing a quiz uh and allowing people to move to the next stage is that an is that profiling which is not allowed uh but surely that can't be the objective of the law so i think also allowing for some kind of risk based uh, approach uh, where the principles are sort of set out in the law and then there is guidance that uh, that that you work towards